Alright, Rakatayawa, Bashem Hao Shai, Bashem Rakakodash. Uh, welcome to another live lesson. The name of this one is The Name of Yahweh. Uh, pretty much in this lesson, Lord Joe, we're going to hit some points. Uh, show you the name of the Most High in the Scriptures. You know, for some of those newer students um, that, you know, are just starting to wake up to the truth. Um, Elder Apostle Tar did a video going into some breakdowns in the book of Revelation and hitting some key points in there. And um, he mentioned that. And it's true, you know, every once in a while we got to go back to the basics because you still have Jake's out there that are waking up that, you know, are new to this, you know. Because uh, I had men made mention of this uh, a while, uh, while back that you have, um, when YouTube was first established, you know, back in 2005, 2006, and when, you know, Israel started to come up on that thing, it really started popping in 2007. So you got to remember, back in 2007, you had... Israelites that were very young, you know, they could have been, you know, five, ten years old, you know, at that time. Now they're coming to, you know, becoming, you know, uh, young men now. So some of them are starting to wake up to this truth. So we have to always go back to the basics, you know, to um, recap on certain lessons, you know. So in the Lord's will in this... Um, lesson we're going to deal with the name of Yahweh, you know, the name of our power, you know, uh, the world calls him God or Jehovah or whatever the case may be, Yahweh, but his name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. Now, the reason why you see this uh, page here uh, with this individual by the name of Stephen D. Monahan is because I just wanted to make mention for those brothers that speak Spanish and that, you know, we're going to this site to get, you know, the Spanish information. This used to be our channel called GMS Apurando el Dia, which means hasten the day. And this page was um, was hijacked <laughs> pretty much by this bastard, whoever this bastard is. Um, they pretty much took our page, you know, that we created back in 2010, December 1st, 2010, and we put a lot of work and a lot of effort and energy that was put into this page, you know, to build it up for those Spanish-speaking uh, brothers out there and sisters. And uh, somebody came and, I don't know how, but they took over the page. They put their name on it. I can't get back into the account. Um, I tried, you know, resetting the password and doing, you know, different things and, you know, trying to follow some of the... the um, you know what they, what they were showing me you know how to do in the security thing and i couldn't get back in the channel so now i have a channel i put on the dia gms i put on the dia but it has no content you know it's like almost like we had to start all over again but that's all right uh so you know if there's any just for you spanish-speaking brothers if you see any activity on here that is not of great millstone you know what happened you know uh so and so now you brothers know, you know, I mean, if I'm a little salt, I'm salty about it because, you know, like I said, we put a lot of work and effort and, and, uh, and zeal and, and passion into this page, you know, I mean, we haven't been doing, uh, a lot of Spanish videos lately because the spirit has been on, uh, the brothers out there in LA, uh, the brothers in Chicago and the brothers in Mexico. Uh, Central America and South America to really go hard and in Puerto Rico and uh, Dominican Republic uh, to go hard on these uh, Spanish shows, you know, so this is, you know, the spirit kind of freed us up a little bit from that and these brothers took over, you know, but nevertheless, we still, I know I'm still salty about it that this bastard, whoever they are, took over our page and when I checked the, the activity, one of them say Hanoi, Vietnam, and the other one says somewhere in South America. So, whatever it is, but you know, it is what it is. It's water under the bridge now. 
Um, I was I ran across this video last night here, and this is a Elamite dude. He might be a Jake. You know, I don't. I, they don't ever show his face except for here. His name is Emmanuel Umali, and this page was created back in 2018. And what caught my eye was the name Yahweh. You know, which you know he he had to be uh, watching us because all the information that he was going to is stuff that we go into. And um, you know, he speaks the Elamite language, and then in this parts of it that he speaks English. You know, and he's going into the breakdown of the name Yahweh, of the Most High's name in the scriptures. You know, and this is just to show you that, you know, the Spirit of the Lord is working and pushing this word out because this individual speaking the Elamite language, you know, I'm, I'm, sh I'm not sure if it's Hindi, you know, um, is going into the name of the Most High. Yahweh and breaking it down pretty much like we break it down you know so I have I I firmly believe that they that you know this individual was watching us and pretty much just you know just started going into you know the the name of the most High, the proper way it's supposed to be pronounced by watching our videos um, I don't speak the Hindi language or Elamite language, so I don't know what he said at the beginning. Uh, I don't think he gave credit to where he got this from, you know, but nevertheless, it is what it is. But you're going to have Israelites out there from all walks of life and from the four corners of the earth uh, coming back, you know, to the truth. And this is what the invocation or the calling of the name of Yahweh is all about. It's Acts chapter 2 verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And now when we jump down here, these are Jews, which are Israelites, devout or devoted men out of every nation under heaven. Because you had Israelites that were scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Now when we jump down to the ninth verse, it speaks about some of these places or regions where these Israelites or these Jews were. It says Parthians and Medes and Elamites. Now the Elamites go back to, or at today's modern day terms today would be the uh, so-called East Indians. Uh, it says an Elamite, in, in example, an inhabitant of the province of Elamites, a region stretching southward to the Persian Gulf, but boundaries of which are variously given. You know, so the Elamites, uh, I'm not sure if you type in Elamite. Uh, let's see, Elam. Let's just try Elam map. Let's see what happens, what comes up. Let's go to images. See right here, Elam. You know, these are, this is the region of the so-called Persians. You know, the, uh, so the, um, Iranians and and the so-called East Indians, you know, these, these are all uh, the same people, you know. But you know, over the years, the the faces changed because of the different conquering. But these Elamites are so-called East Indians. So you have a lot of Israelites in the land of Elam, you know, and uh, among the so-called East Indians. And um, this is why we read here about the Elamites that were devout. There were Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. And another one, um, which the brother Kazak brought up, was uh, in the book of Isaiah, the 11th chapter. And right here, 11, 11. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant, remnant of his people. Which shall be left from Assyria and from Egypt and from Pathros and from Cush and from Elam, see, and from Shinar and from Hamath and from the islands of the sea. So you're gonna have Israelites that are gonna be waking up from all parts of the earth. You have one brother giving praise to the name of Yahweh Bashem Al Shai in the Indonesian language. You know? Ayalam, eternity, which that's not what it means. It means young. It means young. All right. Um, they don't really give you 
much information. But pretty much, you know, you get the picture. You know, so that's, you know, I put this in the description box if brothers want to uh, go and read it. I mean, listen to it, you know. And you pretty much see he goes into... I mean, I didn't watch the whole video, so I don't know if he goes off on certain things. But the mo main part is the name Yahweh and the proper pronunciation, as you can see here. So now, let's go into Proverbs chapter 30, verse 8. Who hath descended up into heaven, or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? So pretty much this is a question being posed is what is the name of the power that did all of these things and what is the name of his son? And the answer to that, the short answer to that is Yahweh, that is the name of the power, and Yahweh Shai is the name of his son. Now these names are very important, <clears throat> you know, because these are the names that are supposed to be put upon the children of Israel beginning with the Most High's name now here in Numbers the 6th chapter this is what we call the anointing prayer this is one of the prayers that we do during the Sabbath service those of you brothers that have been watching the uh, Sabbath or uh, Passover service uh, slash Sabbath service um, videos that brothers keep you know uh, putting back up from uh, year to year <clears throat> one of the prayers <clears throat> in there is the anointing prayer in the Hebrew is Yabaraka Yahweh wa Yashamarka Ya Yahweh Panyawa Alyaka wa Yakanka Yesha Yahweh Panyawa Alyaka wa Yashamlaka Shalawam which pretty much in the English we're gonna read is the prayer that we say, you know, over the children of Israel, which was something that was commanded unto Aaron to do when he do, when he does the blessings. Because the Most High's name is always to be put upon us. You know, as a as a blessing, as a protection. So number 623 says, Speak unto Aaron and unto his children, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, Not any other nation, the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. And then when you go into this word Lord here, you see it's all capital letters, L-O-R-D, all capital. And when you go there, it's from the Hebrew word yah ha wa ha which is Yahawah, 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 all right? And it means, pretty much it means Yah is He, and Hawa is to be. And this individual here, he broke it down right, you know? He to be or He exists. And that's what the name Yahawah means. And that, when you think about the name and the meaning, that covers everything. You know, omnipotent, omnipresent, Everything, you know, Yahweh, He to be. What you know, what more what more is there to be said? So this is the name of our power, which in this prayer, that's what uh Aaron and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the unto Aaron and his sons, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee, the Lord make his face shine upon thee, and the, and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and I will bless them. See, and this is why we to this day do that. Putting the name of the Most High, Yahweh Bashem El Shai, upon the children of Israel. Which the name, the word, the Hebrew word for name is Shem. In the English you say Shem, but it's really Shem. Sha and the Ma, final land Ma, which is the Ma that goes at the end, Shum, which is name, name, a reputation, fame, glory, because at the end of the day, the Most High wants the fame and the glory that's coming to him. Let's go real quick to the book of Isaiah, I believe that's the second chapter, not 26, oh, 20, second chapter, and, um, right, and 17 and the loftiness of man shall be bowed down this is when the lord comes back and the haughtiness of men shall be made low and the lord yahweh alone shall be exalted in that day so that yahweh is going to be exalted by who by his son yahweh shai and the angels when they come back to destroy this devil bring him down and establish and deliver the elect of the nation of israel and establish 
you know, the kingdom of heaven upon the earth. <clears throat> and the Most High's name is going to be exalted. <clears throat> Just like his name was exalted when he brought us up out of the land of Egypt. See, and that's what happened when, you know, when the Lord kept hardening Pharaoh's heart. What the Lord was doing was he was letting Pharaoh build up and become more and more proud. And you know that the, the, the news traveled fast back then. In other words, they, they heard of the greatness of Egypt and how, you know, all these plagues were coming and the Pharaoh kept resisting. And eventually the Mosai came and, and smashed them down. And that's when the Mosai's name became very famous around the world. It was known back then, but it wasn't well known like it was known after that uh, deliverance from the land of Egypt. So on this day alone, in this day, the Most High's name is going to be exalted. And, and the world is going to know who the power of the heaven is that's doing all of these great things. Uh, this is book of Jeremiah 16 and 14. Therefore, behold, the days come, say of the Lord, that it shall no more be said, The Lord Yahweh liveth that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Which is, this is still being spoken of until this day. There's still movies that are being uh, made where they, they mention Egypt. They mention the Israelites. You know, they mention these things. You know, you still got these biblical movies that are being made about it. And every once in a while they'll do, you know, a, a, a movie dealing with uh, ancient Egypt and the deliverance of the Israelites out of Egypt. But that is going to pale in comparison to what's coming in this time. So that's not going to be even, that's going to be in the back burner somewhere. It's not going to be as famous as it, as it is. Because here it is, what, about 3,500 years later or so, it's still being spoken of. You know, it's still being, uh, um, it's still well known of this great act that happened. But what's going to happen this time is going to uh, uh, overshadow that. It says, but the Lord Yahweh liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. And what land of the north is that? It's talking about North America. Now, were we in captivity in the north before? Yeah, we were in captivity under the Babylonian Empire, which was in the north. The ancient Babylonian Empire. But now what great event took place back then that overshadowed the event of Egypt? Not, nothing. So this prophecy has not been fulfilled yet. So when the Lord destroys this place and you see what's going on right now, that we out there pushing his name and, and uh, uh, professing his name to the world, when this place goes down, the one that's going to get the credit is Yahweh, the power, Yahweh Bashem Shai. And from all the lands where he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave unto their fathers. So this hasn't happened yet. So this is why the name of the Lord is being exalted so much. And this is why, you know, when you see these different nations out there reverencing the name of Yahweh, is because you have Israelites among all of them. You know, now I don't know this <clears throat> individual, <clears throat> never seen him, but it's more than likely that he has to be an Israelite in order for him to be uh, speaking of the Mosai. Because he has here this, uh, the assembly of, he has a tetragrammaton, tetragrammaton, and then next to it in parentheses, he has the name Yahweh, the same way we spell it. The assembly of Yahweh teach, <clears throat> you know, and we just showed you how you had Israelites all up and through that, those areas there. <clears throat> All right, so now, um, so we were in actually Jeremiah 16, 14, so that's all set. So now let's move on to the book of Exodus 3 and 13. And Moses said unto the most, because the most high was about to send Moses up into Egypt to deliver the children of Israel from Pharaoh. So he was raising Moses up. And, and grooming him to be the spokesman, the prophet of the Most High, to let to tell Pharaoh, look, you let my people go so that they could come and worship me. But remember, this the Lord hardened his heart because we were slaves. So when you let the slaves go for a period of time, the work is going to be lacking. 
they're not going to be making money. They're not going to be able to build for those however many days the, the uh, slaves uh, are not working. So Pharaoh's like, man, who the hell? I ain't going to let, you know, the, the, these people go. You know, who's going to do the work? I mean, there's so many, and so many. I mean, he didn't say that, but pretty much that is, that's the sentiment. All right, it says, uh, And Moses said unto the Most High, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The power of your fathers has sent me unto you, they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? So basically he wants to know what's the name of the Most High. So that when Israel questions him about who sent you to come and deliver us, he can give him an answer. And this is where GOCC goes totally off on. It says, and the power said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus, saith, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. So now when you look up that phrase, I am. Damn it. hate this new setup. Um, right here, Ahaya, Asherah, Ahaya. So that's why they call the Most High's name Ahaya, but that's not the Most High's name. You know, in other words... The Most High's name, what we call the Most High, is Yahweh. Now, when you read further down, it says, And the power said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord, all in caps here, So Yahweh, the power of your fathers, The power of Abraham, the God of Isaac, Which is the word uh, God is power, or Allah, power, the the power of Abraham, the power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever. So what did he say his name forever was? Here in all caps, you have the word Lord. When you click on it, you have the word for Lord in all caps, Yahweh. Let's go to it. Yahweh. 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 And when you go to the breakdown of this word, we, the word there is Haya. Haya. Right? And then you go to the root word of that, and it's Hawa. They say Hava. Strong's H, 1933. Hava. Hava. But we know that there's no V's in the Hebrew. So how would you say that in the Hebrew without the V? Hawa. Hawa. And then when you go to... When you go to... When you go to uh, Psalms, the 68th chapter, and sometimes they get it right in a blue letter, but not all the time. Uh, Psalm 68 and 4. Sing unto the Most High, sing praises to His name, extol Him that rideth upon the heavens by His name, Jah. We know that there's no J's in the Hebrew. So what would it be? Yah. And rejoice before Him. Now let's go. To Jah, which is really Yah. That's why uh, Benjamin says Jah, Jah Rastafari, you know, because they, they're going based off of this scripture. So this is the shortened form of the Most High's name. So we know that there's no J's in the Hebrew. So how does that, how is that pronounced? Strong's H3050. Yah. Yah. So if you put it together, Yah, Hawa. Yah, Hawa. Yah, Hawa. Yah, Hawa. Yah is he, Hawa is to be, he to be, or he exists. So now you could you, uh, you understand is you could say what is his name because you understand his name is Yahweh, and what is his son's name if thou canst tell. So now that we got that out of the way, now let's deal with the book of Exodus uh, six. And if brothers didn't understand that, then just when the video's up, then just go back and watch it again and take your time. And go through it and dissect it. And, you know, you know, if the Spirit is with you, you'll get it. Exodus 6 and 1. Then the Lord see. And now this is another misconception that people use to try to say that no one knew the Most High's name. And building off of that, I'm just going to get one precept. Um, just to hold on. And let me just go back to this. They try to say that the, the see that the Mosai, Yahweh's name wasn't known back then. 
You know, Abraham didn't know it. Isaac didn't know it. Jacob didn't know it. Nobody knew it. You know, the Lord had to introduce it. No. The Mosai's name was always around. But his name was not very popular back then. Because he had a name, God Almighty. Which the name, or the, the name God Almighty, which we're going to go into, is Alishadja. Which means terrible demon-like power. And that's what they knew him as. That was like famous. But the, his name, Yahweh was not well known. Alright, so it says, Exodus 6 and 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go. And with a strong hand shall he drive them out of his land. And the power uh, spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am Yahweh. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by my name, Power Almighty, God Almighty. Which is, when you look it up, it's, uh, let's see, right here, uh, nope. Right here, Ba is in, Allah is power, or God. Shadya is um, terrible demon-like, you know, or mighty. Ba, ba, ba. Allah Shaja in uh, God of power, uh, uh, demon, you know. Let's see, do they break it down here? Allah Shaja, Almighty Shaja is Almighty, Almighty, most powerful Shaddai, the Almighty, and that's how they say it in the English Shaddai, you know. And when you go to that, to the breakdown of the word Shad, Shad, Shadja goes into uh, a demon. You know, we haven't gone over that in a while, so, you know, I had to go back and find out, like, where the, all that rest of that info is. But for the most part, you get the point. So the Most High appeared to them, and they, it, he was well known to them by the name of the God Almighty, or Alishadja. But by my name, Jehovah, which we know as Yahweh, was I not well known, was I not known to them? So now, if you just read that face value, you say, well, it says he wasn't known to them by the name Jehovah or Yahweh. Now, when you go to the Hebrew portion of that, you have the word na, wa, da, aith, ya. Now, the na, wa, da, aith, ya, um, which they don't really break down here. They just give you the word yadai, which means to know. Now, we have what's known as the Ben Yehudi. English, uh, Hebrew, Hebrew, English dictionary, and in the Ben Yehudi, uh, let's see, right here, when you look in here and you look up that whole, that whole, uh, Set up here, uh, na wa da aithya, which I'm gonna do. No, I, I can't show you on the you know on the thing, but if you have th this, if you do happen to have this book here, it doesn't cost much, you know, it's paperback, and you look the word up, you can see it for yourself, unless you know, brothers, you know, can find. The uh, actual PDF file, you know, on the um, on the uh, uh, online, that's a, a plus two because you could just go straight to it. Uh, just bear with me one second, so I could read it for you out of the out of the book. Like I said, you won't be able to see it, but when you look it up yourself, you know. You you could see or you could compare that um, that that's exactly what it is. All right, so the word is here um, now. Wa da aith. Here you have now. Wa da aithia, and and here when you look it up is now. Wa da aith. And then when you look in the English, what it means, it says well-known, famous. So this name, Yahweh, was known back then, but it wasn't famous. 
And how we know that the Most High's name was being called back then, which you could go to many different scriptures, but one of the one one good one is Genesis four and twenty I started twenty five. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son and called his name Seth. For the Most High said she hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of Yahweh. So they were calling upon the name of Yahweh from back then. You know, so the name Yahweh was always around, but it just wasn't made famous until that uh um until the um deliverance from Egypt. Now there was a precept, I'm not sure if it was in the book of Ezekiel 20, which also goes into the Most High's name being made well known after the deliverance from Egypt, which is the same exact word as this here in the in Exodus uh, 6 and 3, now what the Ithia. But I don't, like I said, it's been a while since I looked that up. Um, but when you, I believe it's Exodus, I mean, I'm sorry, Ezekiel, the 20th chapter. Let me see if I do this. Um, here we go. This got to be it. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord power, In the day when I chose Israel, and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up mine hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your power. And that word known there, just bear with me one second. So it wasn't this one. Here we go. The ninth verse. Um, be, but I wrought for my name's sake. See, because the Most High was exalting his name, just like he's exalting his name now by showing the world that, you know, through the through his men, through the prophets, bringing back up the mysteries of the truth of the scriptures and proclaiming his name. It says, But I wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them in bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. And when you look through here, this should be the one right here. Na wa da aithia. It's the same exact word or the same ex exact phrase as here in Exodus 6 and 3. And when you do the comparison, na, wa, da, aithia. And that's the only two times I believe that that word appears, which means well known or famous. You see it right there, na, wa, da, aithia. Go back to Exodus, na, wa, da, aithia. Well known, famous. So the Most High's name was known, but it wasn't well known until the deliverance from the land of Egypt. All right? And in process of time, we forgot our way. Jeremiah 17 and 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For you have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. So the Lord discontinued us from our heritage. He discontinued us from our land. He discontinu discontinued us from our customs. From our, our, our uh, religion, so to speak, our language, we lost everything. Um, I'm just going to look up the word discontinue. Shem shemat, shemat, to release, let drop or loose or rest or fall. To let drop or fall, to be made to fall down, be thrown down, to cause to let drop, to release. So we were released pretty much. And once, and once we were released from that land, what do you think happened? 
we started going into the ways of the nations. We started following their customs, their speaking their language, you know, reverencing their gods, all the way up until this very day today, you know. And this is why you see brothers that are waking up, coming away from calling on the name God and Jesus Christ and Jehovah and all that, coming back to the Most High, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, and their proper names, because we have discontinued from that her from our heritage, and this is why now. We are we're being brought back to remembrance of these things by way of the prophets, you know, the men that were before us and, and even now. Uh, this is the book of uh, second, I'm sorry, uh, Baruch chapter 2 verse 28. As thou spakest by, the, by thy servant Moses in the day when thou didst command him to write the law before the children of Israel, saying, If you will not hear my voice, surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations, where I will scatter them. For I knew that thou would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people, but in the land of their what? Captivities, plural. In the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. And that's why the Lord is causing this great awakening, this great remembrance to come back. And this is why the Lord said that He will make us, in the book of Ezekiel, He will make us, He will make a small sanctuary among the countries where we were scattered. So that's why this this thing is small. See, Esau's, Esau, when something builds up, where Jake comes together in a positive way, they like to infiltrate it and destroy it because they just want Jake to be animals and kill each other and, and just be buffoons. And if you're going to be anybody in this world, you got to do it according to what he wants. You got to entertain them. You got to do things for them. So what what the Lord did, because the Most High is the ultimate strategist, ultimate chess player, he caused many different splits to happen, and he caused this truth to be spread throughout the four corners of the earth so that he can't infiltrate one particular uh, thing because it has many different heads, so to speak. You know, it's one body with many all those di you know different heads, which mean, what I mean by different heads is Yahweh Shai is the head, but I'm saying that there's, the the truth is out there, but it's it's uh, uh, scattered all over the, all over the planet, so he can't just come in and infiltrate like he normally does an organization to destroy it. You see, and this is why we see what's happening right now. So we're being brought back to our remembrance, but in order to fully come back to our remembrance, we have to know the name of our power, Yahweh. We have to know the name of His Son, Yahweh Shai, and we have to know the truth and what the truth is and who the truth is given to and, and 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 what it entails so that's why we're going back into the scriptures back into the history to get all this information it says and shall know that i am the lord their power for i will give them in heart and ears to hear because the lord pulled off that slumber that spirit of slumber off of us and allowed us to wake up and allowed us to be able to see What's going on? But it begins with the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai because in those names there is great power. You know, matter of fact, let's go real quick to the book of Proverbs, chapter 18. And another precept came to mind. Let's go there real quick to these two. So let's go back. <clears throat> Proverbs 18 and 10 it says, The name of Yahweh is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. So that's why the name of Yahweh and his son Yahweh Shai are very important. The name of the Lord Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. So the the protection begins with the names and also with this truth. That's why it says, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. But that knowledge, wisdom, and understanding is not complete unless we have the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Psalms 124 and 8. Our help is in the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, who made heaven and earth. So we're being brought back to those names. Uh, verse 32 in uh, Baruch 2. And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. Why? Because for a long time we were lost. The truth had been covered up. We were under that great deception, that spirit of slumber that was upon the earth. 
But then the Lord took that away from us and brought us out of that darkness and brought us back into the light. And return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds, for they shall remember the way of their fathers. And this is why it's so important to understand the role of Abba Bivens in this whole thing. You know, Elder Abba Bivens, who is Elijah, who is John the Baptist, who never fell out of the truth. He is many other great men also. He never fell out of the truth. He's the one that, through the Spirit of the Lord, was able to bring us back through this by the inspiration of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai Bashem, Rechakudash, which is what we have today. It says, uh, They shall remember their way of their fathers, which sinned before the Lord. And I will bring them again into the land that I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is what we're being prepared for right now, to go back to our land. And they shall be lords of it, and I will increase them, and they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their power, and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. So when we get back to the land, there's not going to be no repeat of what's going on. And this is why the Lord, to cement that, He's going to change our bodies and put the laws, statutes, and commandments into our inward parts. When He takes out that stony heart, and puts a heart of flesh into us. So it's going to be flawless. It's going to be a flawless victory. So let's go from there to the book of Zephaniah 3 and 9. It says, For then will I turn to the people a pure language. And this is what we're being turned back to. Now we don't have we don't know the, the, the Hebrew language perfect. You know, we, we speak a broken Hebrew because you know we don't we don't know it uh Perfectly, you know, in other words, we don't uh, know, like, we, like if I was to open up the Torah right now, I can read it, I could pick out words out of it, but I don't understand every word unless I go back into the English, or back into the Spanish, so on and so forth, alright, but the Lord is turning us back to this pure language that they may call, they may all call upon the name of Yahweh to serve Him with one consent, because at the end of the day, the Most High's name is going to be one, Let's go to Zechariah 14 and 9. It says, And the Lord Yahweh, by Shem Shai, shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one power, one Yahweh, and his name one. See? So the name of the Most High is going to be one. It's not going to be Jehovah and Yahweh and, you know, a God and, you know, Shad Shaddai and all. It's going to be uh, 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 Adonai. It's going to be one. Yahweh. And that's what his name is being exalted throughout the planet Earth, and these devils have a problem with it. Uh, so now let's go from there to Isaiah 19 and 18. In that day shall five cities in the land of Egypt speak the language of Canaan. So now this Egypt is talking about what? America. Because America is spiritually known as Egypt when you go to the book of Revelation, the 11th chapter. All right? And what's happening is the language of Canaan. If you was to type in that phrase, the language of Canaan, into the search engine, what's going to come up? What you're going to have is Hebrew. The language of Canaan. And that's what you're going to have. You know? The Hebrew language. So here, in the land of our captivity, we're starting to speak the language of Canaan. And swear to the Lord, Yahweh uh, Bashem Shai of hosts, one shall be called the city of destruction, and that day shall there be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt. And you see the altar. What is the altar? What you see right now, wherever the word is being taught, that's the altar. You had the priest. You had the sacrifice, you know. The platform is the altar, you know, and, and the words that are being taught. So it says, And a pillar at the border thereof uh, to the Lord, and it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh shall have hosts in the land of Egypt, in the land of America. For they shall cry unto, the, unto Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai because of the oppressors. And we are crying unto the Lord because of the oppressors. And he shall send them a savior, which is who? Yahweh Shai, and a great one, and he shall deliver them. Now, I wonder how these Old Testament dudes get around this scripture here. 
and many others, but just the point. And he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. Who's that? That's talking about Yahweh Shai. <clears throat> so now that we got that out of the way, see the most the most high's name is very important. And when Yahweh Shai came on the scene in St. John 17 and 6, I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. So Yahweh Shai manifested the Most High's name to his uh to his uh, uh disciples. Because these names are very important. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they kept thy they, and they have kept thy word. So when we jump to St. John 14, 13, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name. So the name of the Father and the name of the Son are both important. Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, which Yahweh is the Most High's name, meaning he to be or he exists Bahashem in the name Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is Yah is he, Yahweh Shai is Savior or Deliverer. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And the last precept I have for you, brothers, is in the book of Revelation 14 and 1. We're going to read it in the King James. We're going to jump to a couple of different versions, you know, translations to give the full sense of it. Because remember, we started off in Proverbs 30 and 4. And at the end of the, uh, the fourth verse, it says, What is his name and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Because both of those names are very important. So it says, Revelation 14, 1, And I looked, <coughs> excuse me, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion. Who is this lamb? Yahweh Shai. What is the uh, uh, Mount Zion? This represents the the governing body of the nation of Israel and the rest of Israel. But the the um, the top of that is the governing body of the nation of Israel, which consists of what the hundred and forty four thousand. And with him, an hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. So it just says his father's name. But when you go to the New Living Translation. It says, Then I saw the Lamb standing on the Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, who had his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. When you go to the Hebrew, it says the same thing. When you go to the Greek, it says the same thing. When you go to the Latin, when we go here to the Latin, Vulgate. Right here it says, Nomen Eus, which is his name, et and Nomen Patris, which is uh, Eus, and, and name, father, his. His name and his father's name written in their foreheads. When you go to the Spanish, it says, El nombre de él, which is his name. Y el, y el de su padre, and his father, escrito en la frente, written in their foreheads. So, it goes back to both of those names. So, everything always takes us back full circle. And that's what takes us back full circle, is having the name of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Both of those names are very important. Uh, uh, um, as long, uh, I mean, as well as this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that we are learning because if you don't have the foundation then the building will not be built soundly and eventually it will collapse and that's why you see a lot of these uh, uh, individuals collapsing because they built with untempered mortar and they haven't built with the minerals of the truth beginning with the names of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai their foundation is not sure that's why their houses are crumbling you know and when you have an individual keep saying, Christ, 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 Christ. After a while, that, that's not the Lord's name. You know, and that's one thing, you know, I'll, I'll mention is back then when uh, the split came, that's one thing that High Priest Ariel was saying a lot. Use Christ. His name is Christ. Christ. You know, he stopped saying Yahweh Shai. You know, because that foundation was, was being broken down. Now, we believe he is a man of the Lord as well as our high priest, Shaw, and that the Lord will bring them out of that. You know, but if the Lord doesn't bring them out of that, 
you know, they're going back in the spirit world, but they're coming right back anyway. You know, but we have a strong belief pursuant to the scriptures that the Lord is going to bring them out of that. You know, and that's why these names are so important. And this is, why do you think when Comfy took over that school, you know, what happened was the name of Yahweh Shai was taken out first. The name of Yahweh was left there for a little while, then, but then eventually I believe they took both those names out. Why is that? Because those names are very important for the f root foundation of this truth. Without those names, you have nothing. You have to have the names first, then the rest of the building can fit, uh, uh, be framely, uh, fitly framed uh, from the ground up. You know, and that's why those names are very important. So like I said, when you go to the Hebrew and when you go to the Greek, you know, it, it uses both uh, the names of the Most High and the name of His Son. And when you go down to this one here, I believe it's... Uh, See, to onoma how to, which is the onoma's name, and this is his. And to onoma tu patros, name father. Name his, name father. When you go to the Hebrew, it's the same thing. You know, Spanish, Latin, you know, we went through different translations to show you. So those names are very important. So this lesson has been a lesson uh, in the name of Yahweh. You know, um, it's very important. That's the name of our power. Uh, Gad called him Yohewa, you know, which is close because remember, you know, we had lost some of that dialect. But for them to call his name Yohewa, you have Jehovah. His name is Yahweh, you know, which proves that Gad, the so-called North American Indians, are Israelites, you know. Um, Ephraim, they call uh, they call him uh, Yahya, you know, which is uh, the shortened form of the Most High's name, you know, and so on and so forth, you know. So just know that those names are very important. Uh, so with that, you know, I pray that your brothers and your few sisters um, have been edified. And to the next time, I say Shalom. Those names are very important. Uh, uh, um, as long, uh, I mean, as well, as well as this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that we are learning. Because if you don't have the foundation.